Today is uh, Wednesday, March the 27th, 2024. And we're talking about the meaning of faithfulness out of the scripture of the talents in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. The kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who's called his own servants, delivered his goods to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two talents gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground, hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with him. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. And the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you'd be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. His Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, gather where I have not scattered seed. Therefore, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What does it mean to be faithful? Remember that we have stated that faithfulness in anything relates to our responsibility, the gifting God gave us, the abilities that we have, the talents, and they're all birthed out of relationship to our creator God. My faithfulness is birthed out of relationship to my creator God. And as that relationship with God is strong and vibrant, faithfulness becomes the byproduct. That's what I believe. Faithfulness becomes the byproduct of my relationship with the Lord. So to say I just have a relationship, but I don't have any faithfulness in in the use of my gifts and abilities is pure nonsense. So I'm going to take a little different approach here. I'm going to ask this question. What does it take to be a wicked and lazy servant? (laughs) You say, what? what? Yeah, what does it take to be a wicked and lazy servant? Because if if you know what it takes to be a wicked and lazy servant, maybe you'll despise that and not want to be it. Here's the first thing. You want to be a wicked and lazy servant? Do nothing with what you've been given. In other words, be slothful. Go bury it in the ground. Because I don't like you, master. I don't like you. I don't like the boss I work for. So I'm not I'm not gonna do my job. <laughs> I'll just make him look bad. No, you're just gonna make yourself look bad. Do nothing with what you've been given. Here's another way to be a wicked and lazy servant. Speak ill of your employer. And by the way, we can say that. Speak ill of your pastor. Just talk them down. There you go. I, I got to look at something here. I just think it's really important. I think if, if we see this, we'll understand it. In the Message Bible, it says the servant given 1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways that you demand the best, make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I have found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound down to the last cent. <laughs> this is out of the Message Bible, that those same scriptures there, oh, around verse 21. Actually, it's around... Uh, uh, Verse, yeah, um, verse 21, I, I, uh, listen to this. I know you have high standards and hate careless ways 
that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. And I was afraid I might disappoint you. And I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound. To the last cent. You want to become a lazy and wicked servant? Just despise the master. Be afraid of disappointing others. You want to be lazy and, and wicked? Just be afraid of disappointing others. We often think that it's other people's faults that we'll be a disappointment to them. And most of the time, if not all the time, it's our own fault. We're a disappointment to them because we didn't put any effort out in it. Here's another way to be a wicked and lazy servant. And you and I know you're not going to find these things in the Word of God necessarily. Listen like I'm listening to them, but play it safe and sound all the time. Never go out on a limb. Never take a risk. Live criminally cautious. I like that phrase. Live criminally cautious. What does it take to be a wicked and lazy servant? Be self-centered. That way you can make all kinds of excuses about avoiding what God calls you to do. Huh? When we squander, ignore, or abuse what we are given, we're rebellious and deserve to be punished. <clears throat> Personally, I believe for followers of Jesus Christ who maintain an intimate relationship with the Savior, then it's really difficult to be wicked and lazy. The tendency would be to do too much. Not an overachiever, but one who pushes the servanthood past their relationship and ends up with a distorted view of a relationship with Jesus. I want to say this to you today because I don't know who's listening to this. I have no clue who's going to be watching this video. They're on the internet, so they're going to be all over the world. If you have not been diligent with what you have been given, if you have not been faithful to discharge your abilities to the glory of God and the blessing of humanity, then correction is needed. James 4, 17 says, Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is a sin. I challenge you today, right now, stop and sit a while at Jesus' feet. Listen for his voice. Discern his will. And then go out and serve him by serving others with one goal in mind, to bring glory to God and reflect his character. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, if I need corrected, if I've not been doing well with what you've given me, if I've not been faithful, correct me. And for those who are watching this video, I pray the same. The chastising of the Lord is good because it corrects our steps that we'll walk righteously before you. Help me to do so. Help us to be faithful. Help us to reflect your character and bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God loves you. Let's do all for his glory. Have a great day.